Um, all right. We've talked Gold Cup. We've talked CONCACAF. It's time to talk our Lord, Savior, and King, Jesus Ferreira. And now I've got, I can already hear the keyboards going from our, our Euro snob Twitter <laughs> warriors. How, how can you say he's the only scores against Karen? Blah, 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 blah. Quiet down. I'm going to start this off. The question has always been, is he in the top three right now? Our, the only person I've heard who has never said anything wrong in his life is Alexi Lalas. And he went and said, Jesus Ferreira is number two on the depth chart. So if <laughs> Alexi Lalas says it, we stand. So here's It the must deal. be true then. It has to be. It has to be. So here's the deal. Flo and Pepe won two. I don't think anybody disagrees. I don't think anybody can really put an argument out otherwise. The argument is Sargent, Ferreira, and everybody else. Just Sargent has yet to do it consistently in a men's national team kit. He hasn't scored for the U.S. since 2019. But he also has the best chance outside of that top three to jump Jesus. Because I do think Jesus is at number three right now. I think you're going to see him get called in more often. And it's really going to be Jesus versus sergeant in these friendly games and they're going to say you're going to have 30 minutes today go go get something you know they're going to give Flo and peppy their time and they're going to say okay jesus you got 30 minutes today figure it out and the next year will be josh go ahead figure it out and whoever can figure it out gets a spot because if he locks down that norwich role at number nine he's got a really good shot at it i think because that's uh, you know again high level playing consistently and succeeding but his my worry with sergeant is he's streaky you look at Norwich. Everybody talks about how he scored 13 goals in the in the championship this year. Eight of those goals came in the first 13 games. Then he scored five in the next 27. You know? So he's going to have to get hot at the right time. And I think Copa America is a big chance for him. I did do a comparison of goals versus like rated teams or whatever. Sergeant's five goals, one came against Bolivia, one came against Peru, and three came against Cuba. Ferreira, two against, uh, five against Trinidad, one against Panama, four against Granada, one against Mexico, three against St. Kitts. Sergeant, I'm sorry, not Sergeant, Pepe, one against Honduras, two against Jamaica, two against Granada, one against El Salvador, one against Mexico. So you've got most of them padding against weaker teams, yes. Pepe's doing it at a higher level right now, yes. Sargent needs to get hot at the right time to take that spot. Otherwise, I think you have to go with the hot hand. And we spoke about this going into the 2022 World Cup. You need to take at least one person who's just bagging goals. It doesn't matter where. If they're bagging goals, you got to take them, right? The Herc Gomez uh, argument. So... I think Sargent's the closest, but right now my three are Flo, Pepe, and Jesus. Yeah, um, my three are also Flo, Pepe, and Jesus. And I, I, I want Sargent to do well, and I think he has good potential, but I just I don't understand the Sargent hype. I just don't get it. He went to the Prime of Norwich, and he was dreadful. He dropped down to the championship and was red hot to start the season, but like you said, was pretty cold to end it. And with the US, with the USMNT, he ghosts. Like in any meaningful game, I feel like he's just ghosting. I I feel like I haven't seen this guy have a goal contribution in ages. I mean, I I I'm looking on FB ref to see if his national team stats. I don't know if this is missing anything, but he has a bunch of friendlies that he's played in. And the only meaningful games that they have on here that he's played in is what is the world cup and the world cup qualifying which he has like 270 minutes played and zero goal contributions at least Jesus Ferreira still scores in the in the games that he plays um yes. so I mean for me <clears throat> Ferreira does it on the club level you know he has struggled in games at the national team level but I feel like he's shown more than Sargent has. So, I mean, for me, it's easily Ferreira over Sargent. Mm -hmm. He's more consistent at the 
club level as well. I mean, he was super good last year, super great again this year. He gets minutes consistently. I think Sargent will get a lot of minutes as well. Um, and I honestly don't think that the championship is that much higher quality than MLS. So Ferreira doing much more in MLS says more to me than Sargent scoring 13 in 3,000 minutes in the championship. So here's what here's the defense I will give to Sargent because he does he does deserve some of it. The games that he actually has played in for the national team have been tough. He's played against really good teams. So Bolivia, Ireland, France, Colombia, Peru, Italy, Jamaica, Mexico, Uruguay, Canada, Cuba are the two kind of weaker sides. Switzerland, Honduras, Mexico in the Nations League. And then he had a couple of World Cup qualifiers at uh, against El Salvador and, and Honduras and Canada, and then Japan, and then straight in for the World Cup. So he really hasn't had that ability to, you know, jump in and say, oh, I'm going to stat pad against ABCD, right? And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like throw him out completely, right? But I'm looking at these games where, you know, he had opportunities to play. The team itself is not like a bunch of terrible players, you know. You're you're looking, you know, he played with Weston McKinney, he played with Tyler Adams. You know, that's back in 2018 when they were kind of doing the the re the reset, right? But then you go to you go to something like uh 2021 against Jamaica. Started with Gio Reyna, Christian Pulisic, Eunice Musa. Kellen Acosta, Serginho Dest, Reggie Cannon, all playing in the same team. And he, and he couldn't get one, right? Like, you can't, I don't think that there is blame to say like, oh, he came in and he played against tough teams with, with bad, you know, bad teammates. I don't think that's a, a good argument that I, because I've seen it come out like that was an argument. Um, Don't think that's a, that's a real thing. But if there is one person I have to pick right now, to say who jumps Jesus, it's Jocelyn. And I think it's closer than people think, which is why there's that argument. But Jesus has been informing club, as you mentioned. He is scoring against the teams he's supposed to score against. Like, if he's coming out of these games with one goal against St. Kitts or one goal against Trinidad, people probably have a, a an argument. But he he's he's cutting them down. Now there's the other argument that he's not getting the service against the better teams, which of course he isn't because better teams aren't allowing that service. That's why they're better. You know, it's a catch 22 there. There's probably a a different role for him. He does things that other people can't do, right? His, his ability on the ball in hold up play. And I, I'll be honest. I don't watch the championship. I don't sit down like most people think they do and watch every every championship game and know about Josh Sargent's game. However, I do watch Jesus Freire game. I know that he can do it in a different role, and it's up to the coaching to get them out. We'll go to the coaches in a li- little bit. I want to ask what you think about this hate against him, like the people who are actively looking to make excuses against him. I just don't really understand it. Like I, I am not a huge Josh Sargent fan because I think fans bail him out way easier than they do other players. But that doesn't mean that I want him to perform badly. Whereas I feel like people actively want Jesus Ferreira to perform poorly. I think it's better for the entire national team. If as many strikers as we have are absolutely balling out. If Josh Sargent goes and tears up the championship with Norwich next season, that's fantastic for the national team. Because that just pushes Jesus Ferreira to work even harder. He can't get comfortable. And and that's the same thing for Pepe and Ballo as well. So, I mean, if if Sargent or Jesus Ferreira really start taking off and putting a lot of pressure on that first and second spot in the depth chart, that's only better for us. So I don't it just it's so baffling that P 
people will just actively want players essentially on their team to perform badly. It just doesn't make sense. Yep, and that is uh, exactly where I came from, right? So it is un like I, I can't believe this is a question. Like, how are we asking if this hate is out of pocket? I've never seen a fan base so quick to make excuses against one of its own players for doing well. Did he score against smaller teams? Yes. Does he play in Europe? No. Are you allowed to enjoy watching your national team score lots of goals against bad teams and win games by big margins? Yes. It is okay. It's such a weird concept that people are actively looking to find reasons for why certain players, which let's be honest, it's usually MLS guys, shouldn't be included in things because of whatever league they play in. And this goes back to the Paul Ariola argument that we had a couple years ago. Come in, you know, work hard, get good results, be happy. I think the, the big thing is everybody saw us being happy with Jesus Frere and they're like, they, their instant reaction was like, oh, people think he's going to be our starting striker. No. I have not seen one person who's like, with seriousness, right? I, I will put my hand up. I tweeted it out to get <laughs> engagements. <laughs> Nobody with any seriousness came out and was like, oh yeah, this game definitely puts Jesus in the, in the number one spot. If we are in a position to be arguing about the number three team, number three striker on our team, and we have to pick between a guy who's scoring 25 goals in MLS or 13 goals in the championship, we should be throwing a party. We should be throwing a parade because I can remember back to a time where we couldn't find one number nine to score <laughs> one goal against one person. <laughs> Why are we having a civil war over the fact that we have somebody scoring goals? Like, are we out of our mind? It's like, stop playing the cloud game. Just be happy your national team has a guy who scores goals. Half a CONCACAF would kill for Jesus Ferreira right now. Mexico would kill for Jesus Ferreira right now. What are we fighting about? What Can we get, get Taylor Twelman in here? What are we doing? <laughs> like, I just I don't get it, man. I don't get it. Not to mention, both these guys are like twenty two years old. Like they they could significantly get better. Like there's so much time for them to continue to get better. They're like they're performing well at a young age. And have national team experience at a young age, and we're like, "Oh my god, this is terrible." It's it it, it is purely and utterly baffling to me. So here and and here's the argument. The argument is always what league he plays in and what teams he scores against. Right? Is it time for him to move on? Will his will his position in the national team be affected by the league he plays in come twenty twenty six? I think if him being in MLS will always hold him back from getting the top spot in the national team. I don't know if he has the talent, honestly, to be in that number one spot in the national team. But I think if he stays in MLS, he will consistently be in that conversation for like third on the depth chart. But I think as long as he's in MLS, I don't think he beats out Balogun or Pepe as long as they're healthy and not like falling off a cliff in terms of form. Yeah, and that's that's where I'm at with this is if Jesus stays in MLS collecting DP money and performing at the level that he's at, I do not think it hurts his chances of playing with the national team. I think people in positions of power in U.S. soccer are smart enough to recognize that the league of MLS is comparable to other leagues that our strikers are playing in. Bar, Balogun, maybe Bar Pepe. So I think Eredivisie is a little bit higher for most, for some teams, for some teams. However, what matters to that point is form, Right? And this is something that I was thinking about during the whole argument, and I think I think this really has a little bit of merit. If you are a defender, the league you play in matters. If you are defending against guys who can't kick a ball, 
or can't make runs or can't time runs or, or whatever, it hurts your ability to defend against people at higher competitions, right? If you are an attacker and you are in a form where you are cutting down any defender who tries to defend against you, and MLS is not nearly as bad as it used to be in defense, by the way. If you are in a league where your defenders are, are average to good, I'll, I'll put that level there. There are some who are not, I will not hide that, but average to good on a, on a normal day. And you are in a form where you are scoring goals, not penalty goals, by the way, because we don't count penalty goals on this podcast. If you are cutting down defenders, making good runs, dribbling at them and winning their 1v1s, scoring goals, creating assists, that plays in more to what you do at the next level than being a defender, in my personal uh, opinion. However, if a club comes knocking from Netherlands, from Belgium, from the championship, from South America, and they're willing to pay him good money, comparable or more, I wouldn't take a pay cut to leave, but if they're willing to pay him, I don't think you turn it down. Of course, we want our team, our players challenge themselves at the highest level, but it doesn't mean that you make the move just to say I'm in Europe. We're, we're well past that for the U.S. men's national. We're well past saying our guy is on the bench in the Lithuanian second division. And I'm using that specifically because that is, that is a joke that's going around currently. We're past it. So you need to find a team that's going to play you, right? Pepe at Augsburg does not get in the men's national. Pepe at Grongenheim, or however you pronounce his team name, does. So you have to make the right move, and you need to know that you're going to play. So if you have a club that comes knocking, promises to pay you, promises to play you, and then goes in and, and gets you, I don't think you turn it down. But you don't go just to go, because your, your national team chances aren't hurting. Yeah. I agree. I think Jesus Ferreira is easily talented enough to get a move to. He could easily be playing in Europe right now. Absolutely. And and here's the thing, right? Europe has to come in and beat Dallas is off. Right? Dallas is paying him a, a mil and a half a year, something along those lines. Is that about right? Something something close to that. I'm not leaving if somebody comes in and says, Hey, come play in Europe for half that. What? What a dumb decision. Unless, unless Greg goes up to him and says, I, you know, pulls a Jurgen Klingman, I'm not taking you until you move to Europe, then you move. But if Greg is smart enough to say, hey, as long as you're bagging goals and, and your performances look good, like you're not just tapping in four goals against, you know, Miami every week, then you're fine. And then everybody can relax. 